There's nothing quite as exciting as watching people get humbled. In fact, it may be more fun than watching two high-level fighters going at it. If they had a fight promotion for delusional people and professionals to scrap it out, I'd buy every pay-per-view. However, they don't have that. At least, not in the mainstream. But you have us to give you some sort of content. Here we'll show you examples of thugs, delusional people, or just odd and mismatched examples of trained fighters proving that there are levels to combat. Here are street thugs exposed by real fighters. For those of you who are ill-familiar with what dojo storming is, it's when someone enters a gym challenging certain people or anyone. It's deemed as disrespectful, but was once a big part of martial arts. In fact, it played a big part in how MMA became a thing. Still though, just because it was ultimately good doesn't mean it wasn't and isn't a jerk move. Nowadays, it's mostly done by people who have no idea how to fight, but they think their life is a movie. And this is some weird scene where they ragdoll a coach and Dana White offers them a million bucks. As we can see here with Coach Dennis and this dojo stormer, that's not the case. The coach, seen here wearing a shirt, pulls guard and butterfly sweeps the confidence out of this guy. He lands in mount, waits for the stormer to spaz out and expose his back, and then the coach chokes him out. No punches needed for this flawless victory. What do you think? Is this how coaches should treat dojo stormers? Or should they teach them a bit more of a lesson? Let us know what you think down below. Here's another video of a dojo stormer taken on a coach. If you can't tell for some reason, the coach is the guy on top and the stormer is the guy getting dominated, in case you needed that cleared up. Allegedly, the man getting beat up said he's a professional heavyweight fighter and got aggressive with the instructor. So, that may explain why the coach isn't respecting that tap from the challenger. It should be common sense, but a tap means nothing outside of training and competition. If this guy's challenged the coach, then this isn't for a cheap AGF medal or for a class. This is pretty much a fight. So the coach decided to teach a lesson and let the challenger know he's only getting out when the coach is ready to let him go. This video does go on a bit longer, but it gets kind of hard to watch. Rest assured, the dojo stormer learned his lesson and hopefully never did anything this stupid again. Again, I can't help but feel like these people challenging coaches think that they're the main character in a movie about someone who was born to be a fighting prodigy. Fighting is something that too many people think that they're innately good at until they're given a reason to believe otherwise. So this coach gave this guy a reason to believe otherwise. This dude called the gym and challenged the coach. He even drove out of his way to go to the gym and challenge the coach. The vibes were a bit weird. It felt tense and friendly all at the same time. The coach lands a right hand that floors the challenger, and then he gives him a chance to back out. But the challenger tried his hand at being a good boxer, which did not go his way in the slightest. I'm not sure how old the guy in the red headgear is, but the boxer from this gym was only 16 at the time of this little match. The guy in red came into the gym looking to challenge someone and got placed against a trained teenager. So, as one would expect, the teenager tuned this guy up. If I had to guess, the boxer maybe had some experience elsewhere, but not a lot. He knows how to keep his hands up, and his punches aren't as ugly as we often see with people who have no idea how to fight. But he's nowhere near as technical and sharp as the teenager here. We can see that on full display, too. The teen is precise with his shot selection and his distance management. Once you know how to avoid looping shots and an overhand right, you really only need a decent jab to beat someone like this. Of course, the teenager has many more tools, and he put them on display. I think he had his best work with the body shots, though. He landed the body a lot. Couple that with making the challenger move backward the entire time, and that's a quick way to make sure that there is no second round. The challenger hits the deck with just seconds left in the round, and it seems pretty obvious that he was humbled here. If you're not familiar with Kevin Holland, do yourself a favor and look into him. He was originally not brought into the UFC because he talks a lot. Then he was given a shot, and he's made a real name for himself by, you guessed it, talking a lot. Oh, and winning fights, that helped. 
Here, he took on an internet troll who thought he could come in and actually give Kevin Holland a run for his money. Though Holland is lost to wrestlers, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and anyone who's not an elite wrestler would do best staying away from his grappling skills. This guy shoots a very poor takedown on the UFC fighter and is caught in a choke for his troubles. Be honest, how do you think you'd do against Kevin Holland in a grappling match? Not too well? No. Same here. Also, if you're enjoying the video, drop us a like on it. Let us know what you'd like to see more of. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to make sure you never miss a thing. All right, back to the fun stuff. Another fighter in the UFC, Natan Levy, took on an internet troll who wanted to defend a tone-deaf internet personality. Said person has made a lot of comments that are, well, stupid. So Natan Levy tweeted against him, and one of the dumb guy's fans tried to defend him, and he agreed to go fight a pro fighter. The dumb apple doesn't fall far from the stupid tree. Proverbial, of course. I love apples and trees. Natan Levy absolutely mopped the floor with this guy. Not that many people thought the other guy had a shot, but Levy really got his point across with all the punching and kicking and such. You'll love to see it. Jiu-Jitsu looks so cool. I mean, sometimes it can look a little goofy when guys are just scooting around on the ground and showing no desire to learn how to wrestle at all, but hey, play your game. There's no other martial art that'll have a grown man feeling like a toddler like Jiu-Jitsu. The challenger in the MMA gloves shoots a weird takedown and sort of off-balances the BJJ guy. The trained athlete here is just playing around and giving this guy a bit of leeway to try to figure things out. This is how the more gentle of the coaches handle challengers, probably people that don't barge into a gym looking to prove a point. Regardless, the trained guy makes it loud and clear that even when going about 10% effort, he's got the tools to embarrass the guy, let alone choke him unconscious if he wanted to. This clip of Dominic Cruz fighting a self-proclaimed ninja never gets old. Cruz, arguably the greatest bantamweight in fighting history, but how does tried and true martial arts and championship belts fare against a guy who's a ninja? Well, my money would go on the fighter, but what do I know? I'm not familiar with ninja lore. So they get at it and the ninja shows that he's taken at least a Taekwondo class. He opens with a switch kick to the head the Cruz didn't even have time to react much to. Cruz, a phenomenal wrestler, takes this guy down and it's all over from there, really. The ninja is stuck inside control but holds on to a guillotine choke, showing that he has little grappling savvy. He's then mounted and gets his back taken. Cruz is landing shots at will and this ninja has got to be feeling a little stupid at this point. Enough shots land and the ninja taps out. Cruz gets up, but the defeated man wanted to try his luck once more. This time, Dom lands a huge left hand and follows that up with a head kick. The ninja is stumbling all over the place, and he calls a quit to the action. Is this your favorite Dominic Cruz performance? It's got to be in my top three just because it's hilarious. Patty Pimblett is one of the biggest names in the UFC right now. A brief hiatus from action due to injuries has silenced the movement a bit, but he's still got quite a lot of buzz around his name, and you'd best believe it'll be loud as we get closer to his fight against Tony Ferguson. He's seen here taking on a much lesser challenge than El Kakui, that being some guy. This guy challenged Patty the baddie, and luckily, Patty wasn't too pressed about it and didn't feel the need to really teach this guy a lesson. However, they did glove up and get some work in. This was mostly Patty lightly punching the guy and the guy hurting himself any time he tried to engage in action. Patty was a good sport about this one, but he highlighted that there's a huge difference between fighters who, you know, fight for a living and people who are eligible to use social media. Bradley Martin isn't as much of a street thug or Twitter punk as he is playing a character. There's no way a guy could be so delusional so frequently in front of such great talent and not get humbled for it. He did put the gi on before and get in there with a high-level jiu-jitsu and judo practitioner. He was absolutely destroyed, by the way. This guy was barely even trying, and he had all 260 pounds of Bradley Martin flying around. He was hitting Martin with some basic sweeps and trips. Granted, this guy is closer to Brad's size, but still, 
this guy would get clowned by a smaller guy like Cheeto Vera or Demetrius Johnson. How do you think Martin would do if he took on a pro fighter? Who would you like to see him go up against if he had to get into one of those street fights he's always talking about? Let us know down below. I may be the minority here, but seeing Dylan Danis do this to Aiden Ross was refreshing. Dylan Danis, of course, will be taking on Logan Paul in a huge celebrity YouTuber fighter boxing match, which may have already happened at the time this video was posted, so I'm not going to say anything about it in case I get things wrong. However, I will say that Danis has grown on a lot of the world, despite saying some pretty dumb stuff at times. A lot of people are hoping he can outbox Logan Paul. But as we can see here, it's grappling that has Danis' heart, and it's what he originally made his career out of. Hopefully we can get an MMA return out of Danis in the future, and we can see him wrist-locking actual fighters. But until then, we've got this clip. Enjoy. A street fighter enters a gym and challenges a trained fighter. I love how this story always plays out. The challenger, in red gloves, challenged a fighter, signed a waiver, and got into the cage. Immediately, his sloppy punches were telegraphed, and he got dumped on his back for this lack of punching know-how. Turns out he can't grapple either. He gets mounted and fed boxing gloves for a bit before he's able to create a scramble. He's bullied back down to the mat, and he's getting the brakes beat off him. A glove comes off, but the match continues, really showing how irritated everyone in the gym was that this guy thought he could come in there and beat up a trained fighter. The last of the grounded pound was brutal, but it was more of a statement, a statement that probably said, hey, don't come into a gym trying to be good at something you've never trained to be better at. Because newsflash, nobody is born a great fighter. Maybe someone is born a better fighter than another bad fighter, but to be a good fighter, you gotta train. But hey, I think the videos that are a result of this ignorance are pretty funny. Chris Curtis is in the UFC and he's one of the most technical strikers we've got in the middleweight division. He's got really good defense and his boxing is top tier. So yeah, he can beat an out of shape street fighter, even if they claim to be 200 and 0. And that's what we see getting done here. Curtis goes about 2% and he's still dominating this clown. It's like wrestling with a child. Curtis is just clowning the guy and that's not even his goal. He was just trying to spar a nice in a gym full of guys that probably would have rearranged his face. Looking at you, Sean Strickland, Chris continues to just toy with this guy. He even takes him down, and you can see him looking at open shots, but not throwing the punches. So this really dumb challenger leaves the octagon and says he could have slept Chris Curtis if he tried. So Curtis got mad at that and was pleading with this guy to put on some gloves and get back in there. You know it's chaotic, when Sean Strickland is laughing and trying to stop a fight from happening. Should the gym have let Chris Curtis humble this guy? Or is he too far gone and a beating wouldn't have saved him? At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that it would be entertaining for a promotion to show us professionals versus people who think they can fight. Well, there was a TV show called Bully Beatdown that was based off of that premise. When Andre Arlovsky was on the show, it was back when he was a ferocious heavyweight fighter. He still is to this day, being one of the longest competing heavyweights ever. But back when this was shot, when he was a young, ruthless fighter. The bully on this show met Andre Arlovsky in the center of the cage and was talking trash right to his face. They locked up and Arlovsky hits a body lock takedown and lands right in mount. He then mangles this guy's arm for trying to trash talk to a professional fighter. The video ends a bit abruptly, but trust me when I say this bully tapped out and was humbled in this episode. There's no right pro to trash talk to, but Andre Arlovsky is definitely one of the worst choices if you care about your well-being. This one is another entry to the list that isn't really a street thug, but it falls under the category of odd matchups and aggressive people getting humbled by talent and technique. The girl that pulls guard here and is obviously much younger than the adult competitor. After pulling guard and looking to engage from the bottom, her opponent pushes her in the face. It's not really illegal, but this was pretty dirty and really did nothing for her. The match continues and we finally get some jujitsu going. The younger girl sets up an amazing triangle choke from the bottom 
and it's very tight. We can see her opponent making some good moves, but once a choke is this deep, the tap is pretty much an eventuality. From what we can see at this angle, the woman taps out twice and the choke is let go. However, she makes a big deal about the younger girl holding the choke for too long. Look into Husa Mapaharis and you'll know what it looks like to hold on to a submission for too long. This was not problematic in the slightest. If anything was an issue, it was the face push from earlier in the match. But hey, we got justice via that triangle choke. That does it for this video. How'd you like the content? Let us know down below. Be sure to like the video and share it. It really does help the channel out. What do you want to see next? Let us know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss a future upload. Catch you next time.